Hello everybody and welcome to Shut Up and Sit Down teaches El Grande and it might look like an old game. In fact, it is an old game, but my god, have some respect and read this review because this is one of the grand old queens of board games. Not only is El Grande still in my collection, not only do I still recommend it, this is still my favourite area control game in the world. Can't recommend it highly enough. Here is how you play. So, as with all Shut Up and Sit Down Rules explanations, we're going to assume that you have set up the board according to what the manual says. We've got a setup here for a four player game. We've got some different kings of Spain around Spain and you're going to be jockeying for position, sending your knights around Spain, trying to have the most knights in valuable areas. But that's going to be complicated by the king. This is the king. It's just the king, nothing else doesn't look like it. it it's the king. He's the, let's move on, God, don't touch it. El Grande is a game played over nine rounds. We've got it here, we've got a black cube that's gonna be measuring the rounds. Every time you hit one of these weird Technicolor dream charts, you're gonna do a scoring of all of Spain. And you're gonna get points depending on how much you've Spained. And then we're gonna keep going and you're gonna put more knights on the table. So, here's how a turn works. We've got five decks here with one sad looking man all the way up to five sad looking men. Uh, you're gonna turn one card off the top of each of these decks this deck is just one card, it's always the same card. These are going to be shuffled. And these are the different action cards that are available. Everyone is going to pick up their deck, which has, again, a different number of sad looking men on it, um, with high numbers having less sad looking men. And in turn order, um, who goes first? This is really funny. It turns out the first player, it just says in the manual, decide who goes first. That's board gaming in the 90s for you. So you're going to decide who goes first, and that player is going to play one of their action cards. For example, let's say um, a 12, which has no people on it. That means you've bid 12 to go first that turn. Then the person clockwise from you is going to look at that 12 and go, eh, maybe I'll play a 1 because I'm not fussed about going first. Now, the 1 has uh, six sad dudes on it, and what that means is you get to take six of the knights from your court, which is like the general supply of your color, and move them into your court. So they go from the province to the court. And the knights in your court are like your supply that you can then move on to the board. Um, so everyone's gonna pick a card, but importantly, as we go around, this person can't play the 12 or the one, you always have to play a different number from all the people that came before you. This guy's got in the middle with a six, so he's gonna get three sad dudes. This guy plays a five, whatever. So once you've all played your numbers, then you've got your turn order for the round. We've got 12, that's the highest, so 12 is gonna start. And all that means is that the red player gets to choose the, any of these five cards. Now every card in this deck has a different power, but also they all have sad dudes. <laughs> oh, I love this game. So um, the amount of sad dudes ranging from one to five is in addition to the power written on the card, how many dudes you can move from your court onto the board. Now let's talk about the king. I very nearly just said a completely different word. That's a rude word that no one should say. So let's say that um, the red player who goes first takes this power. Now. He has a power, which is, uh, ooh, that's cool, special scoring. You can choose any one region to be scored. Um, now, also, there are two sad dudes. So, you can do these things in either order. Either you can place your two red cubes on the map of El Grande and then do the power, or you could do the power and then place two sad dudes. But here's where the king comes in, because you can only ever place sad dudes on the map in areas that are adjacent to the king. And also, the king's area, in the language of the manual, is like forbidden? What is it? It's something funny. Yeah, the king's region is taboo, and no one shall ever touch or do anything or otherwise affect the king's region. Permanently taboo, don't. So we can place those two dudes in any combination of the regions around the king. So we could put them one here and one here, giving us majority there. But then remember, our special power, we can choose any region to be scored. So let's choose good old Basque country to be scored. Now, I direct your attention to the scoring track, which always looks like this. And what that means is the person with the most cubes scores this much, then the person with the next most cubes scores three, the person with the next most cubes scores one. Um, so in this case, red would just get five points. So let's jump over to the scoring track. We'd go one, two, three, four, five. Good old red. Don't get the wrong idea. 
The majority of these power cards at the bottom of the board will be to do with moving cubes around. We just got, we happen to get a special scoring and I'm using that opportunity to teach you how scoring works. Um, so Red's going to use his power and he's going to do his stuff. Then we're going to move from 12 to 6, which is the next highest. Blue is going to pick one of the remaining cards because Red has already used the two stack. So Blue now has a choice between these four abilities. He'll pick one, do that. Um, then Yellow will do one of the remaining and Green will do the remaining. Um, I will point out though, the five card, um, which lets you move a whopping five knights from your court onto the board, is the only card that lets you move the king. You pick up the king and move the king to any region, making that region taboo. So who went last? Green went last, right? So one thing green could do, green could place the king in Old Castile, which is green's home region, and then, because green's already got the majority there, right? Then no one can put cubes in that region, um, but everyone can put cubes around it. So that is El Grande. Everyone's going to use one of these cows, move knights onto the board, then... All the cards you didn't pick are going to be discarded. So uh, then we are going to get ready for round two by flipping the next card off of each stack, presenting five different powers that you're all going to read and analyze. And then we're going to slide the black marker onto square number two. Um, one more rule I'm going to talk about before we move on to scoring and how you win. Obviously, you win by getting points, right? But in addition to when you move people onto the board, you can always place them in regions adjacent to the king, right? You can also, I can't believe I haven't talked about or even raised this yet, this giant castle or the Castile as it's called. In addition to being able to place cubes from your court onto regions around the king, you can also drop cubes into the Castile. And you have to tell people how many to, you can't just be like, and then people go, how many cubes did you just drop in? And you go, oh, there's some. You can't do that. You have to announce how many cubes you drop in. But still, it's up to all the players around the board to remember what cubes are in this goddamn castle. Let's throw some in there for yellow and then some from blue. Um, for an example later. So that's basically how El Grande works. Um, the thing is that when we move on to round two, um, the question of who plays their numbered card first, um, and by the way, numbered cards you play are then spent. You cannot pick that card up again ever in the game of El Grande. So Red, who used their 12, that 12 is now gone forever, and Red will have to pick their next number from um, the rest of their deck. But in round two, the person who plays their numbered card first <coughs> is going to be the person who went last in the previous round, which in our case was the green number one. Um, that means that green is going to be the first person to put forward another card from their deck. Perhaps this time they put out the six or their own 12 or whatever. Double check, I got that right. That's most of the game of El Grande. Finally, we're just going to talk about scoring. After the third, sixth, and ninth round, um, you do a scoring action. And by the way, it's possible to play a short version of El Grande, which is six rounds, which takes about an hour, or a full game, which takes about an hour and a half, two hours. Up to you. Um, so when scoring happens, the very first thing, we're going to slide this cube sideways now. How about that? A round marker that goes down and then sideways. It's a renegade. Uh, we're going to do each of these symbols in turn. First thing is the castle. We are going to score the castle. Now, here is where an awesome thing happens. You may have noticed these spinners, right? Everyone picks up their spinner and then selects where the knights in the castle are going. So, which, and these names on the spinner relate to all the different colored regions on the board. So let's say I'm red and I want my troops to go to um, Aragon, for example. I'm gonna spin that round to Aragon. We all do this in secret. All the players decide and then we score the castle. And then players inevitably go, what? I thought I had the majority. And they didn't. They've lost count. Um, in the case of this, red has four. So red has the most. Yellow has second most. And blue has the third most. So red's going to get five. Yellow's going to get three. And blue's going to get one. What happens if there's a draw, you ask? Because you're clever. You've played games before. What happens is, let's say uh, red and yellow both had four. Both of them will get... So they're tied for first and second place, right? means both of them get the second place reward. Tying is bad. It means both of you get the penalty. Um, if there was the case that um, green was also there with two cubes, red and yellow would be tied for first and second, so they'd both get second. 
Green and blue would be tied for third and fourth place, which means they both get fourth place, which is nothing, right? But then we reveal our spinners. All the players reveal their spinners. And all those knights that were in the castle go thundering off to different places around Spain, depending on where people pointed. And then and only then we move, because that's represented by the sad man who's right here. Uh, and then we're going to score Galicia, then Basque Country, then Aragon. And this is just a way to remember all the different regions as you score every individual region on the board. I will point out now that Portugal is worth zero points. That is because Portugal is a different country, you insensitive bastard. There's no points for sending knights into Portugal until one of these cards comes up that means there's a war in Portugal, and then suddenly having knights in Portugal is worth money, which is represented by these uh, little scoring sheets that you're going to slide over when different cards allow you to place them. After you've scored everywhere, you're going to move that black cube onto round four, and you're going to keep going. Uh, uh, what else should I point out? Oh, yes. Um, during setup, you'll all be assigned a home region, which is where your grande lives, uh, who is a giant cube. And in the manner of medieval leaders the world over, the giant cube does nothing. Um, it's worth no points for the sake of controlling that region. All it does is show you um, that it is your home region. And scoring uh, your home region, or I think coming first in your home region, scores two extra points. So you want to control your own region. You also get two extra points for scoring the region where the king is. So if there was a scoring round and the king is in Old Castile, and green has majority, as we can see here, green will get um, six points, because that's the value of coming first in Old Castile, plus two points, because it's his home region and he came first, plus two points, because the king's here and he came first. Or she. Uh, that is El Grande. Uh, I'm, usually we do these rules explanation videos, and it's super complicated, so I'm kind of... I've been thrown off by the fact that I just taught you the entire game and we've got like minutes to go. Uh, Matt, you haven't played this, have you? No. Doesn't it look good? It looks great. It looks really fun. What I want to know though is why is uh, the, the king's taboo zone surrounded by so many sad men? <laughs> um, I, yeah, it's a mystery. Have you, I've never been to Spain, but I bet if you did, you sure. would find, <laughs> you'd find out why. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Uh, if you watch this video on a whim because you watch stuff we do and you don't own El Grande, hopefully I've convinced you that this is a great game. It is really simple, really brain burnery, a lovely big board. It's tactile, you're playing with cubes and dropping them in towers and rotating dials. Uh, there's very few board games uh, where I feel this way, but I feel like if my board game collection caught fire and I ran out of the house holding El Grande and this is the only game I had left, that would be okay. I would be okay playing this game till I was 80. It really is just that solid. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and please enjoy your game of El Grande.